Hi everyone, in this video we look at this auto button over here. Ready, city, fire. Oh, it's pretty good. And before you think, hey, auto's cheating and useless, it is not. This one is powered by artificial intelligence. I'll also show you how to do it individually to different settings here in the light panel. We'll discuss these eyeballs, some sweet shortcuts, and some interesting Lightroom organizational weirdness it has. All right, first up, let's bring in some photographs. So let's click this little icon up here, or we're gonna introduce some shortcuts. Can you see it there? It kind of pops up. P for photos. Okay, use that one all the time. P, P, P on your keyboard. Okay. <laughs> um, let's just go <laughs> hit the icon. It's better. Don't be on your keyboard, everyone. Uh, let's go to add photos. Okay, and in your exercise files, there is uh, O3, light corrections. Okay, and in there, I want you to bring in these uh, where we are um, images. Okay, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Okay, so bring in all of them. I've got a couple of raw photographs because I, I've made the rest of them JPEGs just for the file size. Can you see raw files can be really big? So just to keep this uh, class exercise files not so ginormous, I've uh, just converted those to JPEG. Okay, so bring in all of these. Okay, and I'm gonna have them all ticked. I'm gonna click add photos. Okay, and I'm gonna work on this like second one here. Okay, it's kind of dark, you can kind of make out the bird in there. Remember, I've got these little sliders, okay, to decide how big these are, okay, uh, get yours appropriate for your computer. And we're gonna work on this uh, where we are. It's called a, what is it called? Uh, Dab Chick. It's a native New Zealand bird. The photographer is Phil Botha. Friend of mine, amazing photographer. Uh, check him out on Instagram. That's this guy here. Just amazing native New Zealand birds is his thing. That man is up early in the morning with a giant lens. Amazing stuff, follow him. Thanks, Phil. All right, so we're going to work on this one here. So let's double click it to open it. Okay, and we are going to look at the auto settings. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to the edit and we're gonna click this button here and be amazed. Ready, city, auto. <gasps> now, auto settings in the past, if you're like, I don't use auto settings, I'm a professional. It's kind of changed lately with the auto settings. Like if you've done Photoshop auto settings, it's kind of like a canned, well earlier on um, in computer world life, uh, auto settings was kind of like a generic thing that kind of worked okay on some images. What happens now is that it's using artificial intelligence, okay, uh, Adobe call it Adobe Sensei, and it actually looks at the image and works on that particular image from a huge database of other birds shot in similar situations. It's pretty amazing and it's always getting better, okay. So auto is not just generic, it looks at specific things in this image and artificial intelligence stuff happens. It's pretty awesome. Even more powerfully is if you go back to G for grid, Okay, to get back to this grid mode, G on your keyboard. Okay, uh, you can just do it for a bunch of them. This is really handy when you've got loads of images. Okay, and they all just need this similar sort of adjustment. Okay, so select all the ones you want to adjust. I'm just working on clicking on this first one, hold shift, go on these ones. Okay, right click it and you can go apply auto settings to four photos. Think auto, think crazy smart uh, and artificial intelligence. That's what I want to say. So edit, undo edit, redo. Nice. And that's super handy when you've got a big photo shoot and you just want to like get it in, do some basic edits and get it out. Okay, it's not something super special where you're going to spend a lot of time on, auto settings can get you there. Okay, then you with them all selected, you can go and export a small JPEG for whatever they're being used. Okay, let's bring in another image and let's do auto just for each of these settings. Okay, so P and go to add uh, photos. Let's click on that one. Okay, grab a deer. Let's grab a deer five for the moment. Okay, let's bring it in. That's the one I want. Okay, let's go to my edit settings. Now the shortcut for this. If there's too many shortcuts, don't worry. I'll cover them in loads. Can you see if I hover above it says E? E for edits. We do that all the time. P, bring stuff in. E for edits. You just toggle it to close it again. Okay, so auto is cool, but it does it for everything. And let's say you don't want that. You can go to edit, undo, and you can just hold down the Shift key, okay, can you see I'm just holding the shift key on Mac or PC, okay, just holding it down and you can see they've all changed to auto. You just click on them. Let's say you only want the exposure, that's it. And you can carry on your merry way. Or you want to look at auto vibrance because that's something maybe like me, <laughs> you can get carried away with. Okay, like I'll let the artificial intelligence decide where a good starting point is. Okay, so holding down shift, you can do individual ones or all of them. 
<laughs> if you click them all. Okay, so that's just a optional way of adding auto. Another useful thing in Lightroom is these little eyeballs here. Okay, so we've been looking at light and I've been using these little chevrons to close things down. Okay, anything that has a little eyeball next to it is something that you've changed. Okay, in our case it was auto. Okay, we clicked on auto, it changed stuff for us. Uh, can I go back far enough? You wait there, I'm gonna undo loads. All right, we're back to the beginning. I just ha hammered away at the undo key. Okay, and watch this. There's no little eyeballs. Okay, these are quite, and if I hit auto, it means that something's happened in here, something's happened in here. Like there's lots going on in here, but it's just handy to kind of know those eyeballs and nothing's happened in here, 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 here. So it hasn't gone through everything, just these two. Okay, and what you can do is you can say, well, what did it do in light? Click, hold the eyeball. Okay, clicking, holding with your mouse. Let go, hold down, let go, hold down, let go. Okay, it just toggles a way of going, okay, what happened to light? Okay, just, because remember we used that backslash, which is awesome, okay? The, um, this is the option down here to turn everything from when you first imported it, okay, from the camera to everything that's been applied. Okay, so that's really good for that. That's backslash key. Okay, but in here, you can break it down and say, just show me the color changes. You can see in here, you're like, man, it's done very little in here. Okay, just a teeny tiny bit. You can kind of see it around here. I'm gonna click once. Okay, and I'm gonna say you, can you see in the door? Actually, let's go into, uh, let's go into 300%. Okay, clicking and dragging with my hand. And you can see the color is, it's quite a bit of a change in the blue, but there's not much else. Okay, whereas the light is quite a bit of an adjustment. So you can actually just click on these to see what's changed. Let's go back to fit. All right, so that's the auto settings. Great way to get started, great for bulk editing, and you can do little individual autos by holding down shift. But if I'm honest, often I'll just hit the auto button, okay, and then go through and go, oh, that's just, that was a bit a little strong there, like, okay, so often I'll do it that way rather than trying to go through them individually. Now, that was meant to be the end of the video, and I did finish it, but I've come back because there are some strangeness with Lightroom, okay, in terms of the file organization. So if we go back to, remember what was the shortcut for getting back to grid view? You remember G, the G, huh? is one <laughs> okay what happens is let's open up this little tab here okay it's showing us not all photographs it's showing the recently added that were recently added in the last five minutes just a way of um lightroom trying to kind of stop it being a big mess okay which can be a little tricky when you're new because you're like what happened to the um dab chick the bird where did that go well that one's in the last 15 minutes okay so it's kind of broken them into these little groups without you asking okay so that can be useful, but also sometimes when you're new, just click on all photographs and there they all are. Everything you've got, which after a little while will become useless because you'll have thousands of them. So that's how that works. If you do find something's gone missing, okay, it's probably been separated them out by Lightroom trying to be helpful. All photos. Let's do that. Be on all photos and I'll see you in the next video. All right, that is the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. It helps me out. Uh, also subscribe to the channel because there's lots more Lightroom content where that came from. Uh, if you are sitting there thinking though, I wish you'd just do a course, you know, take me from zero to hero all the way through Lightroom and show me everything. Oh, you're in luck. Uh, I've got something called the Lightroom Essentials course. There'll be a link to it in the description here. Uh, so check that out if you want to go from zero to hero in Lightroom. But for now, carry on. Like and subscribe.